Hello, and welcome to the fourth video of my Amiguro Basics series. My name is Emma, and I am the crochet designer behind Emma Crafts Design. Today, I want to show you something that's actually been asked quite a few times, how to assemble your Amiguro pieces once you've finished them. So I will show you how to attach different pieces together, um, and I will show you a few techniques that I personally use to make sure that my pieces are always positioned the way I want them to. I hope you enjoy. Right, so for today's video, I have actually already crocheted a few shapes um, because what I want to show you is how to finish your pieces and how to assemble some of your crochet. Um, so I, I, like I said, I've already uh, mostly crocheted this shape over here, but I will, um, I actually have stopped before finishing it because I want to show you how I'm going to stuff it. And I also want to show you how we finish and how you can actually have a very neat finished look. So here I have stopped with, um, I have 18 stitches going around and I generally like to stuff my amigurumi when I have a, like a hole about that size just because it makes it a lot easier to put that stuffing in there. So the first thing you need obviously is to grab some stuffing. So that might seem like a lot but you generally will find that you can put quite a bit of stuffing um, in those shapes that you make. So all you have to do is just you push that stuffing in there Sometimes I like to help myself if it's like a smaller piece that you need to stuff. I like to help myself with a pencil or the back of my crochet hook. And you don't need to actually finish stuffing your piece at that point because what you will do is you will still need to crochet to close that shape. So I haven't quite finished stuffing here, which is fine. Um, now what I need to do is I need to do another two rounds to finish closing that crochet piece. So, um, all right, so like I said, we have 18 stitches there. So to finish, I will just have to do a single crochet and then a decrease and repeat that six times. So just going around. The reason why also I don't like to start stuffing too early my pieces is because if you start too early, then um, you have chances of catching some of that polyfill. Um, and I find it really annoying. So, um, yeah. So that's why I normally just wait until I'm at 18 stitches or less to do the stuffing. So we'll just go around. And then for the last round, I actually, so you'll notice I have my stitch marker there. But for that last round after this one, I actually do not use um, a stitch marker because I just find it easier to count myself um, rather than having the stitch marker getting in the way of my stitches. So that's why I normally remove it by that point. Okay, so this will be the last of my stitch marker. So now this, this was the second last round and I had, so I now have 12 stitches going around and I will grab a little bit more of that stuffing and put it in there just to make sure that it's stuffed nice and firm because I do like to have my toys stuffed nice and firm. But obviously you don't want to stuff this too much so that it goes through. So you see, you can't see it go through my crochet fabric, but it's still nice and firm. Um, obviously this is all a matter of preference. If you like your toys stuffed really loosely, you can also stuff them really loosely. That's not a problem at all. Okay. Uh, and so the last round will just be six decreases. So, and I like to really pay attention for those last decreases because this is going to be really that bit where if you don't pull your stitches tight enough, um, you might have some holes. So, like always, I used to, um, I like to use that invisible decrease method because I think. 
that it gives a neater look with less holes. So if you haven't watched my um, second video, that was in my second video that I showed you how to do an invisible decrease in the round. Uh, and how many stitches do I have now? I've lost count. Oh yeah, one more. So one more decrease to do. Here we go. So now I have only sti six stitches left there. So I'm going to pull a yarn tail. Um, because I'm just going to close it there, you don't actually need too much of a yarn tail. So that's probably enough. Cut it. All right. So now you can see there's still a little opening. And so we're going to fix that with our sewing. To do your sewing, you want a needle with a pretty big eye so that you can insert your yarn easily through. Um, and this one is quite pointy, but you don't actually need to have a very pointy needle either. Um, not for amigurumi. So I'll just put my end through and I'll show you how you finished um, closing. So I'm going to use this really cool technique that will actually help you um, to close it really tightly and it pretty much is invisible once you've done it. So what you want to do is you want to go with your needle in the front loop of your six last stitches. So see, there's a second one here, the front loop, the third one, and you want to do that all the way around for five and six and once it's in all six you're just gonna pull that and you see no more holes and then all you have to do is you have to secure that yarn tail so I find that pull it, putting it um, through about three times generally is the magic number so I'm just gonna Secure it into place. There you go. My yarn actually split a little bit again. Oh, what has happened? Here we go. All right. And then once this is done, just gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut it All right so goodbye yarn tail and here you have it so you have closed your piece if you need to close it okay now I'll show you I actually have made another piece right that um, I didn't close on purpose because I want to show you how to sew an open piece onto a closed piece but pretty much here, so I have um, just fastened off by pulling with a really long yarn tail there so that we can use this yarn tail for the sewing. Okay, and so there is 18 stitches there. All right, so what will we do with this? So this is actually going to be, so I, I kind of just like winked this a bit earlier today. But pretty much this is going to be a head and this is going to be a little body. And then I have also made some limbs that we um, will sew on as well. So the first thing you want to do, obviously, is you want to stuff that body. So again, grab your stuffing. And again, you will have to top it up anyway. So don't be too concerned if you haven't um, stuffed it, you know, to the max of the firmness that you want. Okay, and then the first thing I always do is I use lots of pins to sew the thing in place. So what I like to do as well with those pieces is if you have a headpiece, for example, that has been closed and you have an open body or like neck, what I like to do is I like to sew this on the bit that was finished because I always find my finished bit a little bit less neat than my starting um, 
bands. So, I mean, it's still pretty neat, but it's a little bit less. So I like to hide that by just sewing my body onto it. And so you'll notice I have my little hedgehog here, my little Yoshi egg that I made, that's my pin holder. And so what um, you will do is you will want to just use lots of pins to put that in place. And those are just regular straight pins that I'm using. So by using pins, you're actually making sure that that body is where you want it to be compared to your body, uh, compared to your head, sorry. So yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with the shape of it. And from there, so you're going to grab again your needle and you're going to start sewing that body onto the head. Okay. So how do you actually sew the body onto the head? What I like to do is because this piece is closed, so the head is closed, I like to actually go and grab the stitch from the side there okay so you're gonna find one of the stitches that you want to sew it to start there and i like to see how i was taken that stitch there so that's what i like to take it there and then because the body is still open what i actually like to do is um i like to grab the actual stitch so i know a lot of people would actually sew on the first like on that first the surface stitches as well but i actually like to grab this here because i just like the finished look i just find it very neat and again, there's no right or wrong, you know, it's like however you sew it um, that's comfortable for you and that works is good. But that's just my preferred way of doing things. Okay, and I find sometimes the pins can kind of get in the way. So if they do, you should have had enough pins anyway on the other side so that you can remove just one pin and continue going around. So you'll just continue all the way around there. Okay, so once you have reached a point where you um, have sewn most of your piece on, but you still haven't quite finished, and you like you will see there's like a little opening in there. What I like to do is I like to check the firmness of my body, and if needed. I'll just add more stuffing to make sure that it's the firmness that I want it to be. Okay, so, and you need to do that obviously before you finish completely closing your shape. So generally I try to stuff my pieces uh, quite well just before anyway, so I don't need to do too much adjustments, but I always um, find that I end up needing a little bit more stuffing. And then you will just finish closing your shape together. 
Also, the sewing part generally is the part that does take me the most time. <laughs> it takes like a lot less longer to just crochet all the bits and to sew them together, especially um, if you just want to make sure that everything is sewn properly. And, you know, if you are going to gift um, those toys to children, you, you really want to make sure that everything is sewn on really well. And also can be a little bit perfectionist, so sometimes I'm just not satisfied with the position of a piece, so I just take it apart and do it again, <laughs> which can take a while. Okay, last stitch. Right, so now that I've finished um, sewing it, I can just remove those pins there. And then um, again, you want to secure that yarn tail. So I just again put it back and forth three times at least, sometimes four. Make sure that that yarn tail is secured. Before you can pull it. So, and you can see like the sewing line is actually really neat there. You can barely see. Um, so now I told you that I've made some little limbs. So I'll show you how to sew a little arm on. I don't really know what this thing is. It's just um, literally just a shape to show you how to do sewing. So with um, arms... Uh, what I like to do actually is a lot of the time you will have small openings like that. And what I like to do is I like to sew them closed. So I like to just sew them closed before actually um, sewing them onto the toy. So I'm going to do that right now to show you. So to sew it closed, I just literally, so it's six stitches wide. I just fold it in two. And then I just pass it done close so I just pass it back and forth through the stitches um, and then so again I will use lots of pins or maybe not lots because it's only like a tiny little arm but a few here and here I've decided to actually sew that um, towards the neck, so where the, sh the head kind of meets the body. Um, when you do that, especially if you're working with little pieces, just be careful because I just um, pricked my fingers. So yeah, just be careful with the pins. Um, I prick my fingers all the time and it's not really nice. <laughs> okay, so once you've done that, then what I normally do is I do the same thing. I will... So you take like one of the little V's from the stitch and then pull that through and then I will go through the arm there, so the arm bit that I've just sewn closed. I'll go through those two stitches and then I will find the next little V stitch over there. And then again, and then the last one, because there's only, once you folded the arm, there was only three stitches. So it's not very hard to sew this one on. So once I've attached the arms, what I like to do though, is I do like to remove the pins just to make sure that the arm isn't too floppy. Um, that it's the nice, you know, there's the right level of movement there. Uh, and I'm quite happy with how it is now. So I'm just going to um, secure my yarn tail and call it a day. But sometimes if you're not happy, you could also add a couple of stitches underneath the arm to kind of secure it down in place. That's also a possibility.
the thing is like when you're doing sewing right like you're the one who's going to decide what you like what kind of aesthetic you like and it's really interesting because from the same pattern a lot of like different people will actually have different looks based on how they're doing their sewing so it's really a matter of how you do your sewing and how like what kind of aesthetic you are after okay so um and then i will show you a leg i won't bore you with doing the second arm um so for the legs um i've just done these little stumpy things and i'm not really sure if i want to put it at the bottom or um so you could again you could either you know place it at the bottom and that will be like a standing little thing or you can put it there and that will be like more sitting um i think i'll make it standing so to make it standing i'll actually put it at the bottom here and again i want to make sure that i pin this piece very well so that it doesn't move so right when you're doing your limbs obviously you do want them to be kind of aligned so you want to make sure that your arm will be aligned with your foot Okay, so that's why I'm just pinning it there. And then I will use the same thing that I did when I sew um, the head or the body to the head. Um, again, so this one I haven't stuffed because it's so little. So I haven't put any stuffing in there. But, you know, again, what I'll do is like, I'll grab a V from the body this time. So stitch from the body and then I'll put it um, through that stitch there. The last stitch from that round. So this should be again pretty fast to do because it's only little also i've got no idea what should i make of these guys what do you think should i make them into little aliens or would you guys be interested in a pattern just let me know um in the comments if you'd like me to just do like a quick little free patterns for those guys because they, they were really easy um, and what I should I what I should make with them? Maybe I should add some little antenna and make them into little aliens. That might be cute. Or they could be little cacti. If I just add a couple of pieces to the end, I don't know. Just let me know what you think they should be. And next time I will also show you how to put on finishing touches. So next time I will show you how we do embroidery for the face. So I'll just be using this little guy again because he's made now. So it'll be easy. Okay. So now that the leg is on, I can remove my pins and I will just secure my yarn and that is it. And I will leave you there. I will I will make sure this little guy has an extra arm and leg for next time, I promise. So there you go. And of course, when you're putting your other limbs on, do make sure that they're symmetrical. But again, that's why we use lots of pins to make sure that they are placed correctly. And this is it for today. So don't forget to let me know in the comments if you would like me to put a pattern out for this um, very small amigurumi that I've made for you today. Um, and if you like this video, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And I will see you next time with our new amigurumi tips. Bye.